All right, and now our uh, interim minister, Reverend Julia, is joining us from Oregon. So hopefully we will see her shortly on the screen. Good morning, everyone. Can, if you can hear me, somebody please put a thumbs up in the chat. Oh, I hear you, Gary. All right. Okay, great. Thank you. Gosh, I'm so excited to be able to join you today from up here in boring Oregon. It always cracks me up when people ask me where I live. I get to say boring Oregon. And it's uh, boring in a good way, actually. I live on a property that's over 30 acres. And so I've been enjoying the deer, the crickets, and the owls talking with each other at night. I arrived safe and sound last Thursday night and have been busy cleaning up the place after having been gone for 10 months. I'm so appreciative of my friends up here who are so supportive of me getting my needs met and accomplishing what it is I need to do. I've often said that I feel like one of the richest people on the planet because of the wonderful, loving, caring people in my life. The abundance that God is as my life shows up as my friends and neighbors. And speaking of neighbors, today's talk title is Love Thy Neighbor. I'm certainly feeling lots of love for my neighbors up here. They know who they are. Thank you so much. I, I truly am grateful for your presence in my life. So when I read the talk title, the scripture from Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18 came to mind. And it goes like this. Love your neighbor as yourself. Both Jesus and the rabbis regarded it as one of the two great commandments. <clears throat> so when I was reading over materials for the talk, I read a lot about the importance of loving our neighbor, but not much about loving ourselves. Now in science of mind, we know that we are one and that we are all connected by spirit. Our thoughts and our actions toward others affect us all. So in order to create a world that works for all, our spiritual work needs to begin within our own selves. We have to be the love we want to see in the world, and we have to be the peace we want to experience in the world. So this call to action to love thy neighbor needs to start with loving ourselves first. Love thy neighbor as thyself. If we don't love ourselves first, then things about ourselves that we don't love will seemingly be showing up in others, and it's hard to love others when we are projecting. If you're not familiar with that term, the definition of projection that I'm talking about is a defense mechanism by which an individual unconsciously attributes their own behaviors, emotions, impulses, undesirable characteristics, and thoughts onto others. So how do we discover the parts of ourselves that we don't love? Well, one way is by noticing the judgments that we have about others. In order for us to see something in someone that we don't like, there must be something within us that is like that in order for us to recognize it. So when you notice yourself judging others, this is a call to go within and see what it is within yourself that is in need of healing and love. It's so important for us to do our own inner work, to uncover the judgments about ourselves that keep us in separation consciousness. Remember, you are a beautiful individualized expression of spirit, whole, perfect, and complete, just as you are. And if you are unable to say that to yourself, wholly believing it, and feeling a sense of love for yourself, then I encourage you to continue doing your spiritual work to progress on your journey of self-love. If you need support, reach out for prayer, see a therapist, do your forgiveness work. 
Now, I don't know about you, but as an adult, whenever I need to do forgiveness work, it ultimately comes down to me needing to forgive myself for something. It was something I did that caused the event, even though I may have started out the process wanting to forgive someone else. So there's a shift right there. I don't know if you got that. Instead of being the victim of somebody doing something to me, I recognized that I was the cause and that I could forgive myself for whatever it was I did. There's a couple forgiveness processes I'm gonna share. One is called, um, and I've used them both, but one's called the 70 times seven forgiveness exercises. You may find this helpful if you haven't done it already. So in, um, in the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 through 35, it says, Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven so one of the exercises you can use to do your forgiveness work is this 70 times seven. And the way to do it is um, get out a piece of paper, write down or think of a person that you want to forgive and write this out. I forgive the person's name 70 times a day for seven days. So that's one tool that you can use. 70 times a day for seven days. Another really great tool is the Ho'oponopono prayer. If you're not familiar with that, I'll share that with you now. I haven't heard about it for a while. The Ho'oponopono prayer is four phrases. The first one is, I love you. The second is, I'm sorry. The third is, please forgive me. And the fourth is, thank you. And it's said, with regular practice, reciting these four simple phrases helps develop self-love and self-esteem at the times when we need it most. So I'm going to invite us to do this practice right now. So if you feel comfortable, comfortable I invite you to close your eyes and think of someone you feel like you would like to forgive. And it could be yourself. I'm going to say each of the four phrases one at a time. And then you can repeat it out loud or silently, whichever feels most comfortable to you. We'll go through the process of repeating each of the four phases three times. Okay. So I'll say the first one now, and then we'll say it all together. I love you. I love you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to say them one at a time, and then we'll repeat them and say them together. Okay. I love you. I love you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. And one more time, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll do it one more time. I love you. I love you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. 
Thank you. Thank you. Now I invite you to just notice how you feel after saying this prayer. And if you feel a shift has occurred, then this may be a good practice for you, and one that could work for you. And so if you haven't already done so, I invite you to open your eyes again. And just be aware of all of us here today, either virtually or in person. And I'm going to quote Dr. Sue Mortar, we're studying the Energy Codes book. And I like this little twist that she has on the saying that we hear quite often, that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. She says, we are spiritual beings having a spiritual experience on the physical level. Because we know everything is spiritual, I, I really resonated with that. So let's recognize that in this collective spiritual experience we are all having, that it isn't easy being in this life. Everywhere we look, we can see hardship, pain, wrongdoing, and suffering. So what can we do to create a world that works for all? Well, we can first love ourselves and then love our neighbor as ourselves. Can you imagine if all of humanity loved one another? It's hard to imagine when we look at the circumstances that are out picturing in the world today. There seems to be so much hatred and divisiveness, so much us versus them mentality. Collectively, we've forgotten who we are. So it's up to us to remember that there is only one of us. I'm reminded of the song. There is only one of us. In your eyes, it's me I see. There is only one of us. You are my reflection. There is only one. So how do we love people who have beliefs that are so different than our own? It can be especially challenging when there are family members. One way to come from one way is to come from a place of curiosity. I have a tendency to think that everyone is doing what they think is best. So where is the commonality in opposing views? That's what I look for. The things that we can agree on. What needs are we each as individuals or groups trying to get met? What fears are we experiencing? that may cause us to want to go to war, the fear of death. Our own fear of death can be so strong that we convince ourselves that it's okay to go and kill others. Wow, that's so amazing. Why are we so afraid of death anyway? From what I've heard from people who've died and come back, it's so good on the other side that they didn't want to come back. But while we're here, let's do our part to love one another. Having loving dialogue with people who have different beliefs than our own is one way of breaking down barriers and coming to some sort of understanding to help us love one another. Sometimes we don't know how to have loving dialogue because we weren't taught how to communicate in loving ways. Instead, we become angry by what others are doing or saying, and we lack the skills necessary to speak lovingly and to communicate our needs. In November, I'll be facilitating some nonviolent communication workshops so we can come together and practice the steps of nonviolent communication, which is also known as compassionate communication. It's a simple process, but it's not easy and takes practice. And how lucky we are to be able to come and practice with one another in our beloved community. So here's a reminder of some practical steps for loving one another. Practice empathy by making an effort to understand other people's perspectives. 
bridge divides by having open, respectful communication to understand where others are coming from. Extend a helping hand to those in need. There are countless ways to donate of your time, talents, and treasures. Embrace and celebrate diversity. Diversity is what makes this world such a beautiful place. Promote inclusivity by advocating for policies and practices that ensure equal rights for, and opportunities for all. So in conclusion, we must love ourselves to better love our neighbors. Look for the love in every situation and every person. Since God is all and God is love, love is everywhere present. We can choose to see love if we are willing to. And we can lead by example by being the love we want to see in the world. We can break down barriers with our loving actions. This will create a ripple effect because others will see our loving actions and be inspired to be loving also. We all want to be loved. So let's go out into the world and give as much love as we possibly can. We can change the world with one act of kindness at a time. Namaste.